Hello, Sharks. I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here with Justin Saliba. Just GTO. I'm like, who am I here with today? Okay. We're going to take a look at a hand from a $10,000 buy-in Poker Masters event. How do you feel playing in the post from Poker Masters events? It's the best place to play poker. <laughs> I mean, Aria Poker Studio is pretty sweet. Uh, fun to battle with a lot of the best players. Rake free is always nice. I mean, yeah, I feel great. I love playing there. Probably my favorite place to play. It's a good gig. My favorite yeah. place, too. That was a question someone asked me the other day. What's your favorite place to play? Like, Poker Go Studio. <laughs> Easy. It's amazing. All right, let's take a look at this hand. It folds around to you. 22 big blinds deep in the small blind. You look at the beautiful 7-4 hearts. What do you do? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can. Make sure you check out the GTO charts at PokerCoaching.com. You can mix this up between... Just don't fold. <laughs> limping or raising. Do not fold. The only hands you're folding in this spot when it folds to you in the small blind are your really bad hands, like 9-4 offsuit, 9-2 offsuit, 4-3 offsuit, 3-2 offsuit. The hands that are pretty bad. But all your suited hands need to be played. So, you can we probably limp some of that, too. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you think that your opponent in the big blind is not going to raise your limps often enough, you can limp with everything, then. Or you can limp with all the, the junky hands, too. And you may say, what's the point of even playing the 7-2 offsuit? But... You make a pair, you're happy enough. You get to bluff sometimes. Yep. A lot of players in the small stakes games are way too weak and passive after the flop. So you can limp everything pre-flop, and then just bet the flop for a big blind, and they'll fold a lot when they don't have something. And that's little bits of equity going your direction. Or you can raise with the bad hands, and they'll either call or fold, and then they'll just fold to a flop continuation bet. So, maybe you don't follow the just GTO <laughs> charts from the small blind. Depends on your opponent. Anyway, we raise it up this time. A lot of people think, I don't want to raise, because what if I get shoved on? You fold. You fold. <laughs> you have the seven high. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Come on, everybody. Sometimes you got to fold. All right, we raise. Big blind calls. Flop comes. Eight, six, four. We have bottom pair and a gut shot. There's two diamonds on the board. We have two hearts. Tricky spot. Take a second. Think about what you, what you would do in this scenario. And write it in the comments section below. Do you check? Looking to check call? Check, looking to check, raise. Bet small, bet big, or just shovel it all in immediately. Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right. What's the GTO solver say to do in this scenario? I think you have, like, two pretty reasonable options. One is check. The board's pretty good for the big blind. I think we need to check a lot in general. Why is the board good for the big blind? Um, we're doing a lot of limping with, like, the middling suited portion of our range, and they're doing pure calling with a lot of the middling suited portion of the range. So I think they're, like, 8 high, 9 high, 10 high lower boards that are pretty connected like this are just going to be pretty good for the big blind compared to, like, if the board comes too high card, like, King 10 deuce, you just bet small, right? But, like, I think these low middling cards are connected pretty good for the big blinds calling range um, when we raise. So I think it's going to lead to a lot of checking out of position, um, but also a lot of really polarized betting. And so I think you could jam. I, I think you could probably just put all the money in with this type of hand. Um, 2.5x pot. 2.5x pot. I think, I, I think in spots like this, you can just say all in. They're going to fold some better hands. You have okay equity when called. And clean up your equity in general. Um, we have hands like nines with no diamond that are just like pretty happy saying all in here, you know? They don't really, they like need a ton of protection right away. So yeah, I think I think those are probably the two best options, just checking you're going all in in the spot. Something some people do wrong when they actually do run this through a GTO solver is they don't let it use giant bets. Oh yeah. They say either bet small or like a third pot or two thirds pot. Okay. But you have a lot of options here. You can bet one big blind. You can bet pot you can bet all in right yeah. and if you don't give the solver those options you probably won't get the best answer well you will not get the best answer just lose right EV. yeah so anyway you opt to go for a check a lot of people get afraid checking here because they think well if i check i'm just going to get outdrawn a lot i don't care <laughs> yeah it's like we don't have very many big blinds here yeah you gotta do everything you can to you, you want to get to the showdown to some extent, right? Like, you have to figure out a way to get to the showdown with your decent hand. And if you just think about, hey, I want to win this pot, you're going to be playing really badly. Yes. Like, you need to make good decisions, you know? Like, you know what the best thing to do? 
with your whole range if you really want to win the pot is just go all in every single time because you win the pot the most often right but yeah you can't think like that yeah you have to just try to play well in these spots and, and and make good decisions because if not you're just gonna get crushed in these fields we track opponent bets thirty thousand, which is about half pot a little bit less than half pot uh so this is a spot where we expect them to bet a decent amount of the time right because like you said this board favors their range a decent amount. So when they bet, well, what are options now? We could fold, but you're not folding a pair, especially with a gut shot. Would you fold 4-2 here if you had 4-2 somehow? I don't think you can fold. I don't two. think you can fold any pair, yeah. Right. Um, so then we can call, or we can raise. And then we can raise tiny or raise big. Let's talk about the merits of all of them. I think default plays probably call. We have like a good middling equity hand with a draw. We, we don't mind keeping the pot small. We can lead some turns. We keep in his range in with bluffs that are somewhat drawing kind of thin. Um, so I think like call is probably the default, default easiest option. Um, jamming seems okay. I don't think I would jam super often in this spot, but it, it could be all right. You make him, you're gonna make him fold some better hands, and when you call, you're doing okay, kind of like the all in on the flop. Um, but my favorite option in game is to like just go for a really tiny raise size here. I think it's just really hard to play against. Um, they have to continue with such a large portion of their range, getting such incredible odds. Um, so yeah, I like I like a min raise and then just call off here if they jam um, in this spot. I, I think you'll get your opponent to muck a lot of all their better fours that choose this size, a six sometimes, um, and it just looks super nutted. So they're going to play really tightly, I think, which is obviously sick for our hand. A lot of people never use this check small raise when shallow stack, but very often that is when it is the best option because, like you said, it forces them to stick around with a lot of kind of junky hands. Like, imagine we check shove all in here. We're not going to be happy at all when they call, right? Like, we're going to be behind the majority of the time when they do call. But when we check min raise, now they're going to call with all sorts of nonsense. We're actually ahead of some portion of the time. And people don't like that because they think, well, I'm going to get outdrawn. But not all that often. Usually they're drawing to six outs or something like this, which is some, but not a lot. And also, you have to realize, it's not just how do you play the seven fours, how do you play like the pocket aces, right? Like hands like that that are really good, where your opponent's drawing to perhaps no outs, right? Or backdoor outs. So anyway, you decide to go for the check raise. Yeah, the overpairs is a good point to talk about, because like, in this spot, you want to think about like, which overpairs need the most protection. And so, like, aces with a diamond, imagine if you have aces diamond club here. You can just call, you right? You can just call, right? You don't, you don't need nearly as much protection. Compare that to nines. Nines, no diamond. You need a lot of protection with that hand. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, if you think about, like, how vulnerability plays into it, I would always raise pocket nines if I got here, and then I would just check call my aces a lot in the spot. Keep them in with the, you know, 10-nine. You know, stuff like that that's just going to, like, barrel off really often and just doesn't have that much equity against you to right. make more top pairs, you know. So King nine, five and things like that. Nines and aces are essentially the same hand strength, except for nines is way more likely to get outdrawn by random whatever the opponent has, right? Whereas aces is not. Therefore, you want to raise the one that's, even though it's, like, weaker, right? Because it needs more protection. Same thing with, like, ace-eight, right? A similar scenario where it's very vulnerable, but almost always the best hand. Yeah. Just want to put money in the pot right away. Yeah. So anyway, you raise, small, and he just folds. Some people say, what? How in the world will the opponent possibly fold getting such good odds? Well, if he doesn't have anything, what's he going to do? Yeah. Right? And he might make a big fold. I don't know. I think he'll make big folds in these spots. He, just he shouldn't. King, king four of spades or something like that. He's sitting there like, oh, I'm dead. That is an interesting thing. Imagine he did bet king four. Or, I mean, any any, any marginal pair. Give him, like, I don't know, 6-2 suited, right? It's a, it's a nasty spot because he's not going to improve very often on the turn. And he's very often going to face additional aggression. What if your opponent does call here and we get an overcard turn, let's say a jack? Offsuit jack? If it goes double flush draw, I think my range wants to do a lot of jamming. Um, if the flush completes, I think I want to do a lot of checking and small betting with some jamming. Um... With 7-4, if the turn is the Jack of Diamonds completing the flush, we just check fold. Pretty rough spot, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. this is something else a lot of people don't like doing. When you get a really bad card, you just lose. Yeah. Sorry. There are some cards where your hand is just going to lose. You're done with it. It's annoying, but you're done with it. 
Um, or if you're one of the real sickos, you look at him and see if he has a flush, and then if he doesn't, make him fold an eight. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have that in me yet. Yeah. But... <laughs> well, we're learning. We're going to become live pros eventually. Online pro only at the moment. Um, okay, so what if the turn's uh, like a two? A two of hearts. Not sure. <laughs> I need, to need to study this spot a little more. I, I think I'm probably two of hearts. I think I'll probably just check again. Why? I, I don't really want a small bet to fold. Oh, you're not folding. I'm not folding. I mean, if he calls a check raise and then comes two and he small bet and he jams, like, it's a pretty rough spot. So I, I think I'd probably just check call. Well, but you got to realize, pot, pot's going to be 200k. Oh, yeah. You're just all in on the turn. Yeah, we have, half, we have yeah, yeah. 55% pot or something yeah. left. So. I think on any on any blank, you're just all in. You have to be right. That's, the, that's what I would think. Yeah. So, like, as you get shallower and shallower, you just realize sometimes you're a beat here and that's okay. Because if your opponent folds anything, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes they're going to call with some worse hands every once in a while. Like yeah, five four. We were. Yeah, it's important to keep track of your stack depth. That's something that some online poker players <laughs> have a difficult time with in live poker. Yeah, tough. Even online, when we're looking right at the hand, it's hard <laughs> to keep track of it. Always make sure you pay attention to stack depths. How many times have you messed up in poker because you did not know the stack depth? Not very often. So probably about eighty-five. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be it for today. Fun spot. Do you do much check min raising with shallow stacked? Let us know. Good luck in your games. Have a great day. Make the most of it. If you enjoyed this, click the like and subscribe button below. Click the notification bell. And if you like videos with Justin, let us know. We'll have him back for more. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you guys.